Welcome to The Racket, silencing the noise in your business. I'm Pam Foley. And I'm Paige Weiss. Thanks for stopping by and hanging out with us. All right, welcome to our show today. We're going to continue our conversation on marketing. Last time we spoke a little bit more about network marketing, yes, as we well did. as the difference in marketing and sales and how those two can be completely different things, but yet they really go hand in hand and play off of each other. And today we're going to talk about just what are some other types of marketing efforts that are out there and what we can do to do that. And really to get your business known. Yes. And so that kind of takes us to the word of the day today, which is awareness. And how does that work with what we're going into? You know, really the point of so much of our networking and marketing is they really need people to be aware of your business and even that it exists. Yes. I mean, certainly of your product and of what you can do, um, your service, all of that. But really, the bottom line is, remember, don't be a secret agent. They need to know they that need you to, exist yeah, before they don't look for it. you. And that's really how I see awareness in all of this mm-hmm. because you're Yes, you are creating relationships and your reputation and even getting sales and getting clients. But if they don't know you exist because you're, I don't know, at home in the basement, not doing anything, then um, you're not going to you're not going to make it as an entrepreneur. No, I, I, we hear it a lot when we build a website out for a client and, you know, and then they're done. And we talk like, all right, let's discuss some marketing efforts. and. They're really not sure if they can afford it or if it's you know going to fit in their budget. Mainly the marketing efforts that we offer because we're such a digital marketing firm compared to helping them in a variety of marketing right. ways. Or right. for example, I can't go do networking for the client. No, we can't do that. So I can maybe no. guide them with my knowledge, <laughs> but I can't like you know go help them. So that's why I say that when they start to decide how they want to market. And oftentimes they're just like, thank you so much. It was a great website. Really appreciated the service we got from you and everything. But it's not doing anything. Right. And every time I it's ask them. It's not build them and they, they will come. No, it is so not. It Darn it. If you build it, they will <laughs> come. And, you know, I'm always like, well, then what are you doing for marketing? Because that's really the next step. What are we doing to drive traffic to your site? Well, nothing. Not much. And it's like, if no one knows you're there, then how are they gonna find you? My other one that I use a lot with them is, how many times have you driven down the road, either A, seen a billboard, or B, seen a restaurant that just opened, a brewery, whatever it is, we're in Denver, we yeah, have a lot of breweries. <laughs> then you go by, and the first time, you don't even really know it's there, because it's been built, it's in the building process, right. whatever. And then all of a sudden, you see a sign go up, and you're like, well, that's cool. So now they're starting to be a little more aware of you because there's a sign out front, but they still don't know anything about you. So, but they're driving this drive over and over again, and eventually it finally clicks, oh my gosh, there's a really cool restaurant down here. Or they've driven by the billboard so many times and it's just not clicking with them. They see it and they keep driving, they see it and they keep driving, and then all of a sudden after doing it over and over, they're like, oh, that's interesting. Let me go visit that website. And really, isn't marketing just even getting me on the road so I will drive by it? Yeah. I mean, that's right. I mean, marketing yeah, is honestly one way of it is because you chose a storefront or a restaurant front on a busy street, that alone goes into a little bit of how are you going to market. If you didn't put a sign up at all, no one would know. If right. you didn't say now open, they may still think you're under construction. And so even though you're sitting on a prime space of real estate in this they example, won't know you're there. they won't know you're there. Yeah. Or I have to hear it from a friend and then I hear it from someone else and then I'm like, oh, maybe I should stop in and check it out. So again, it's how do we start building that trust? How do we build that reputation? Building that awareness. And that I wonder awareness. where we got the word of the day. That, that you're there. <laughs> And so those are some ways that it, it really is. It's not if you build it, they'll show up. Whether it's an establishment and you're more of a brick and mortar or whether it's an online store or a service industry, you still have to market. It just depends on how and what way. Yes, and I'm super excited moving forward in next episodes to start talking about digital marketing. But 
before we do that, we really need to talk about, I mean, I know we've talked about networking, which is mm -hmm. a great starter um, marketing tool and even continuing. I mean, both of us continue to do some networking, but really there are so many other options in terms of marketing. And we started to make a list, just a few of the ones that we wanted to talk about and present that even exist to you guys, like print marketing and um, personal marketing, which I see as calls and visits, mm -hmm. um, going and seeing potential clients. A little bit clients. more of a relationship, but maybe yes. it's a little bit more of a cold. A one-to-one -one yeah. and um, building it into more of a warm, um, taking it out of sales and into marketing. I think merchandise and promotional products, you know, shirts and pens. And doing and, it well and doing well, it right. Yes. So it's all we'll, about doing it well. So but. we'll, you know, circle back into some yes. examples of how it works into each of these as you, you know, Absolutely. Later, as you um, talk about them. But it definitely, again, not every one of these is right for every single situation. No, and maybe none of them are right for you, but it's important listeners to know that they exist and then really again do your homework i know we say it a lot but do your homework and understand which ones work for your business so let's talk about them hey have you ever used um print marketing you know i haven't done direct mail myself like for my business i haven't felt that have you done brochures? You know, I think print marketing is mail, but it's also, mail's a whole different episode. Well, so exactly, <laughs> that's what it goes yeah. into, is that there's so many different ways. And finally, um, we created a one sheet for the business. And at first I was like, I don't know. A sheet. physical, tangible one a sheet? A physical, tangible, printed off one sheet of paper. It's just the front side. And at first I was like, I don't know. And second of all, I hate carrying anything more than I have to. So now it's just... <laughs> one more thing I have to make sure that I go, you know, go and take to a meeting. And I cannot tell you the number of times that I set it down, I just say, hey, you know, I'd like to leave this with you too. And they look at it for just even two seconds and they go, you go for digital marketing? Wow. They came to us for a website and they had no idea that we did digital. And without me having to quote unquote, sell them on our digital services right off the right. bat, they take a glance and they're like, you do digital too? Oh, awesome, thank you. And so it's right there in front of them, but it, I don't know, like I cannot tell you, and it baffles me, how much <laughs> that little piece you know, helps them. And I, that might even be the only thing they get off the entire sheet, but it leads us to more sales, it leads us to more stuff. Right, and they know. We've got another one now that talks about our process and how our website design services work. And so it's a little more of a visual for clients that they see like, we aren't just a, we're only gonna design it and move on. Like we are an all-inclusive website design process. So it's really important that we have that sheet to explain it. And then it helps because both of those, I'm able just to attach as PDFs to emails for those clients that maybe I didn't meet with in person, just so they get some more information on us. So, I mean, we, I've seen it more and more, like in our, you know, working in our business, but you no, know, when I first started, we didn't do it a whole lot at all. And, Trust me, I've tried other things. it can things. get expensive. It can get it expensive. Can. I've tried other things and sometimes they worked, sometimes they didn't. And so, you know, again, it was a little more trial and error. What does your target audience want to see? What is this benefiting? How does it work? That sort of thing. Yeah, and I've had similar experiences. So when I was um, an attorney and even when I was a realtor, I spent time and money putting together things like brochures, like a three-fold brochure. And when I was an attorney, I did, and I had tips for getting a divorce, and oh. that helped. People read it, but, um, you know, I mean, the truth is, when you're an attorney who does divorces <laughs> and you're not getting along, people aren't getting along with their spouse, they kind of find you. But that was, what was good about that brochure is that it gave information and it also was a sales tool for mm -hmm. me, a marketing tool, because my name, my law firm's name was all over it. Right. I think... Um, coming from the real estate industry, where that's a little bit different. Um, certainly people want, interestingly, kind of like what you've seen, right? When they're looking at the product, the houses, they want a tangible flyer. Yeah, Oh, um, I, when I was looking for sure, I was like, give me the tangible flyer. I want to right. take this information. I want to look over more, you know, answer any other questions that I have that maybe I didn't get a chance when I was there. So right. absolutely. So super important there, but it's the one sheet for the house or a condo or whatever somebody's selling. Mm -hmm. It's not 
the deeper level five color brochure with you know the trifold right. and really expensive um, print marketing. So it kind of depends on what your industry is. We've seen it a lot, um, you know, as we talk to those that are service providers for businesses, mm. where they'll have like maybe more of a presentation folder that's got information oh, in it. Yes, I always call these things leave behinds, so yes, that as yes. you leave, they're still a tangible good with them. It helps them remember you if they're talking to other companies that yes. might help you stand out Makes a little bit more. more professional maybe yeah so there's a lot of different reasons and so we don't overlook print when we're talking to clients well for sure like do you have a brochure do you have something to hand them I know with our mindset our sponsor we work with them too to say we need to have rap cards so that people can know more about you as they're walking out of the doctor's office because oh. the doctor might not have time to talk about your service there but if we can spark their interest, they'll take the rep card with them on the way out. So there's so many different ways that print can be helpful. And while it seems like it could be expensive, it can go a long ways. And at the same time, it could just be that one missing piece that you're that is a much lower cost in investment compared to digital marketing. Well, but and it could really even, go a lot further. Yeah, and even taking it to just the smallest amount of print marketing. Think about business cards. Mm -hmm. So even though sometimes they can be obnoxious in networking that we talked about, <laughs> right. it's an important marketing tool because you do leave them behind or you do have them in a um, container where people can pick them up depending on mm -hmm. if you work with an office or you know if you work in a co-working space, a lot of times you can leave a card. And nobody wants to be have the like worst looking card. Or what does that say about your business if you right. just got the cheapest flimpy? I mean, I've seen people do everything from I cut a sheet of paper myself. Oh and no, really? Cards to, <laughs> Don't do that. No, I yes. <laughs> to like the flimpiest. Like there, or I, the other one I love is when they scratch out the email address oh. and say this isn't correct. <laughs> you guys, it's not that expensive. Buy new business cards if your email address isn't working. You you are going to lose the lead when you scratch out a phone number or a card or tell them most everything's correct but one thing. Then why even have the business card? So it's true, and it's your first entry point of print marketing because you're right. It's not expensive, and anybody who's a brand new entrepreneur, mm -hmm. that is the first step, and then you start thinking about and one sheet sure, and brochures yeah. and everything else. And make sure it looks unique and it's for your brand and it has the right information, that it's not cluttered, because as you mentioned, it really is that first impression. I know, Grant, I'm in the design industry, so I get it, and I, but I've also seen the power of all of these things work. I have really, really nice business cards, and yes, I paid more for them, but I guarantee you people are holding on to that business card a little bit longer. It's making a little more of an impact. And for me in my industry, when we talk about branding, marketing, design, it lo it looks really good to have a really nice business card. If you had like, a bad one, it's like a hairdresser with bad hair. Right. <laughs> yes. Well, should I really trust them or not? You know? Yes. So, I understand why we do it, but oh my gosh, yes, bad business, they're not expensive. Those business cards, you should have done professionally, you should spend a little bit of money on them, and have them printed on a nice quality paper, not something that's just gonna fold and crinkle up the second it goes in. It reflects on your business more yeah. than you've ever known. It really does, and I just think it's so interesting that something like print marketing can really span such a gamut mm -hmm. that there are so many different ways and I really encourage our listeners to think about all the different ways that could apply to their business and what works and maybe it really is just a one sheet that's a flyer that mm -hmm. they pass out or you know maybe in some industries like when I was practicing divorce law it really was a trifle brochure that made sense well and, and everything in between use the print in a lot of places it makes sense for us to get some printing one sheets done because when I do speaking engagements throw some out on the table so that people you know I might not be able to speak to everybody in the realm uh, like after the event but at least I have some documents out or if you're sponsoring an event even if you don't have a booth See where you can sh uh, set some sheets out. I'm sure they'll let you, mm -hmm. but it's just one more place that you're getting that additional exposure and you're so creating more awareness. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> you know exactly where I was going with yes. that one. And so that goes into, you know, sometimes print does and sometimes it doesn't overlap into the personal piece. I agree. Yeah. 
But I think moving into the personal piece, um, I really see that as calls and visits. And the first thing I think is calls, because a lot of times when we think about calls, we're thinking about, you know, that terrible, awful, no one likes it, right? The cold calls and no one wants to get them, no one wants to make them. It's just, it's old technology and mm -hmm. I don't think it works ever. Have you ever answered a robocall or a call I've and thought, I should totally buy that. Definitely not answer <laughs> robocalls that way. There are some times that I've, you know, like, and then I always credit them too, and I'm like, all right, if you made it past me, like, I'll listen for, I'll listen for a second. That's very nice. Least, Paige is very nice. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, it's impressive, and you're like, wow, okay. But no, I mean, it's, it's super hard, and here's my thing. It obviously works because people keep doing it. Yes. The robocall works. We do get clients that ask, oh, so Google, no, Google didn't call you, it's a robocall. Yes. But they were wondering and they were concerned and they were curious. And so, you know, it's one, educating everybody. Oh, so everybody. those are the scare calls. But then they, yeah, yeah. like there are some people that, that it works for. And so, but then here's the thing. Do you really want your company to be known as the one that's just like robocalling everybody? Or making or? cold calls. And I really see those as more um, sales calls. Mm -hmm. But I think you can also make marketing calls. Absolutely. So maybe those are a little bit warmer and they are people that you've met or mm -hmm. maybe it's your, you've just started networking and you don't super know that you're not supposed to collect a million cards and just go right. back and you realize after listening to our last episode that you have 25 cards that you collected at the last one. Mm -hmm. Well, that might be a perfect opportunity to pick up the phone and say, hey, Paige, you know, I know we were both at the same networking. I didn't get to really spend any time with you. And I just wanted to give you a call and see if we could connect and learn a little bit more about your business. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a warmer marketing call. Absolutely. That builds brand awareness. I was going to say the soft calls for sure yeah. go over a lot better. And they may not be expecting it, but at least it's they're expecting it more than a, a cold call or a robo call. So then they usually are pretty open. To then people are nicer person. too, it's not as yeah. painful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that leads me right into the same thing, which I see as personal marketing, is um, visits. Mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm bad at this one. I don't. I am too. I don't visit enough, but. But people who do, do really well with it. Mm -hmm. And um, it can be a low cost for people who are new as entrepreneurs. Back to time versus money. Absolutely. Right. If you were a little bit low on money trying to get your marketing off the ground, start stopping into some places that could be potential power partners or a, you know, maybe it's a, a follow-up with a meeting you had before and just pop in. I believe visits are really good for building the power partner I think relationship so too. and showing up and just you know, and sometimes it is a little more unannounced. I don't know what your take is on it. I've heard showing up with some sort of good for them. Maybe one morning you take in donuts or bagels. Yeah, and you stop by I've with heard some, that too. You know, like maybe you stop by in the afternoon with some brownies, whatever it is. But take take your printed materials with you and say, hey, I just wanted to leave the brownies here with some materials because the person that you're going to see may or may not know or be available to meet that second i'm going to tell you they may turn down your paper but not when it's attached to brownies or breakfast or something else or and it's just it's not for every one of your clients but i think it's really a great way to get yourself known for people mm -hmm. that you want to be power partners or Maybe somebody that you're really courting for a big project. But you're going to go the extra mile. Again, yes. building the know, like, and trust. And, the, and being I'll, different. We were people don't do it. about it. That there was, I'm like, oh, there's a connection I'm trying to make, I, but I can't remember this person's name. And for me, it was because they just stopped following up with me. They yes. stopped making these calls. And I haven't seen them now in probably a year and a half to two years. So now that I finally have a client for them, <laughs> I can't remember who they are. And so that's where, yes, I understand that maybe it seems like, oh, you want me to go visit these really good power partners? Right. But if you stay in front of them, they will lead into work. And if you continue to be kind, and I'm, sh I'm sure it goes back to the old theory, too, of if you give them something like breakfast or brownies or something like that, then they're going to feel a little more obligated to give something back. And that could be in a variety of ways, but 
it could mean that they're going to be more prone to refer you next time over a different, let's say, real estate agent right. who hasn't ever stopped by. I really do. I think that that kind of goes to, um, which happens to all of us, that we really need to differentiate ourselves. And part of making our business, people aware of our business, mm -hmm. is that we're different and we're willing to go that extra mile, whether it's in our networking that we're doing well or in the print and how we're choosing to do that mm -hmm. or in personal calls or or um, there is a coach out there for real estate that calls it pop buys. And um, really, it's an interesting way to make a relationship. It, yeah, I refer it to the um, home inspection industry, same thing. How do you stand out? You never really get a chance to meet with the homeowner. Yeah. They literally are like, here's a list for my realtor. I need to call somebody. I need to get a book immediately. But who do I go to? I've never had to use one before. Right. And so it's either going to be a referral or someone online. But if you can build that relationship with the real estate agents, the mortgage lenders, whoever it is, with these pop buys or information or trainings or anything to help them better their, their business, they're going to be so much more likely to choose you out of the competition. Oh, I completely agree. And it's true for so many industries. So think about what would make sense in your industry and who would make sense to do that with because mm -hmm. it's definitely not everybody no but it's the important ones and then i like merchandise and promotional pieces yeah, you so <laughs> i like my t-shirts um and i can't tell you how many pens i have from different people and sometimes they really work i will sit and look at the pen mm -hmm. if it's a nice pen don't buy cheap pens sometimes people need <laughs> to steal the pen so now you got into someone else's hands that's true they may not know them about you but they liked it so much when they were writing with it or they just accidentally put it in their purse when they're done, but pens will go a long ways even though they're they're there. Yeah, you know? and you would think, I mean really, if you didn't really take time to think about your marketing and your merchandising, you wouldn't think a pen would work, but I it does. Haven't, yeah, I haven't done a lot on the merchandise promotional product side for myself. I keep thinking about it. I was like, I should get glasses or I should do yeah. um, mugs. One thing at one point I had looked into was like getting USB drives oh, because it actually business. worked for my business. Right. A pen, when I don't see a lot of our clients, isn't maybe it doesn't the one make that it makes sense. Any sense. And, and so, again, you have to know your business. And the only reason we didn't pull the plug on or the trigger on that one is because we don't send a lot of backups of the sites through oh. like mail or we don't at the final like sign off hand them the site so it didn't make as much sense but when i was looking at should we do this or not that's definitely what i wanted to consider is what is something people would continue to use that would be practical for our industry so that when they pull it back out they're like that's the company that helped me with this and yes because it's really about keeping your name in there um, in, front. in front of them and that they remain keeping that awareness yes i was just going to say that your funny page because um because we forget just like Paige forgot who this person was i mean you just don't remember but if that girl had had a promotion product that was in front of you mm -hmm. like or a you usb a or of course i followed up yeah. but this is kind of the the backup plan of following up. Mm -hmm. So it's important to do the other steps, but I think there's a place for promotional and merchandise. The promotional could run into your personal like visits and follow-ups. Maybe what you're leaving them is a couple coffee mugs and some hot chocolate mix, and the mugs have your brand on it. Right. Super simple, cute, you got a discount because you bought by, but they're probably <laughs> gonna drink coffee every morning, whether it's the one time they use the co uh, hot cocoa mix, or whether they just leave it on their desk every morning. And so just like that, you can put little kits together that have more of your brand on it so that your visit goes a lot further or whatever. If you're hosting an event, throw something out. I remember when Fidget Spinner last year was so Oh crazy. yeah, that's big. Oh my gosh, I went to a digital marketing event and every <laughs> booth had a Fidget Spinner on it because they were the hot trend. Because they were the hot thing. And it's really just about, it's really drip, marketing mm -hmm. because it's just somebody keeping your name in the back of their head in case your the need for your service or your product ever comes up and I think if you combine all of these that we're talking about and even with digital 
then get ready to take over the world because mm -hmm. you're building hopefully a good reputation, right? And mm -hmm. people are aware of your brand. And that's, yeah, really, you know, one thing that we're giving you examples is you can use one of these methods, you can use multiple methods, or how can they kind of all work together? But it's important that you really think about how does it work for your target audience and how does it work to keep that awareness for your brand? Well, Paige, I think that these are such interesting ways and I am sure that our listeners have more. And if they do, you guys should leave them down in the comments because we would love to hear. But I think it's time to hear from our sponsor because when we come back, we're gonna talk really about what can you DIY in marketing and what should you hire a professional for? And you know, money, it always <laughs> comes money. down to money. <laughs> Absolutely, but hopefully we're giving you guys some ways that you can save a little bit of that money and some ways that you can make that money go further when you do. So let's hear from our sponsors and we'll come right back. Hey everyone, this is Kyle with Outdoor Mindset. We are an outdoor focused community for people affected by neurological challenges, both diagnosed individuals as well as their supporters. And we believe strongly in the positive power of the outdoors and community and strive to enhance quality of life through a common passion for the outdoors. We do this through regional outdoor meetup groups, our adventure scholarships, and the connections made within the outdoor mindset community. So if you've been diagnosed with a neurological challenge or you know someone who has, we welcome you to join our community at outdoormindset.org and follow along on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. I hope to see you all outdoors very soon. Welcome back. We are just talking a little bit more about some types of marketing outside of networking and outside of digital marketing to really boost your awareness for your business and drive some more traffic to your, whether it be your website or your phone or whatever that lead source is. Um, so yeah, we're going to talk more now about the do-it-yourself versus professionals and kind of dive into money. how we make this work. <laughs> yeah, money. I think that's the bottom line because you're right. How do we make this work? Like where, what should your budget be and um, how much it been? Because really you could spend a lot of money. A lot. And not just on digital, but on all the things we've already spoken about. We haven't even gotten to digital yet. Well, the last thing we need is for you to run out and go buy pens, cups, hats, yeah, t-shirts. Because, you, <laughs> like, again, finding the right one as opposed to, you know, spending it all. But there are people that do that, that are just like, oh my gosh, I have to have all these things. And you don't. It's, no. how do we make it work? But when we start talking about the do-it-yourself versus professional, I, personally, coming from my industry of it all, start to think if you are designing yourself let's just say a business card that doesn't look great like we talked about before versus hiring a professional are you actually saving money mm -hmm. in the long run i think that's a good question to ask ourselves every single time i every time is is this actually helping me or hurting me is the design something that looks good or am I just shoving it out the door because I need business cards tomorrow for an event that I forgot about? So I'm just gonna go print from my home computer using, you know, like Office Max's print yourself business cards. And so. Not that there's anything wrong with Office Max. No, printing them yourself. <laughs> yes. Last minute, because you didn't have that part. <laughs> that part might have something to do with problems. <laughs> really yes. Nothing against the story. Um, and that's, I think, the way that I like to really look at it is we have seen some crazy stuff come through our door. <laughs> hey, can you just do me a favor? Can you, I know you do more design. Can you take a look at this flyer that I'm going to hand out at this next event? And I'm like, do you really want my opinion? Or, <laughs> you know, like, why don't you just have us design it because it's going to look better? And is it hurting you or not? So what it, what's kind of your take? Because like I said, that's my personal take, knowing that what we do day in and day out is design and how right. important it is to spend that little bit of extra money. But I also know from a do-it-yourself side, there are benefits. There are, and um, I think I've done a little bit of both. Mm -hmm. And um, because I have a good design eye and I'm, I'm good Canva. at writing, I'm awesome at Canva. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> so I like to do a lot of my content development and I like, to play in doing the design myself mm -hmm. because I, I enjoy it, to use the word like again. But, um, but the truth is I have to spend time sometimes 
thinking exactly what you just said. Like, is this the highest and best use of my time? So in fact, um, I have a professional now working on a site that I'm adding to my site, which I created, excuse me, because, um, because it just wasn't worth the time that it would take for me to our, learn yeah. to build it correctly when, um, when I could hire someone to do it. Well, and, and for I you, think, you like, know where or how to find the tools to do it yourself. I feel yes. like a lot of people also don't. And so they're trying so That's hard true. to do it themselves, not realizing that maybe there is a platform out there that would make it easier for them, in which case, great, go ahead and do that. I'm not even going to lie, we totally say use Canva to help with social media posts because you're going to get more exposure than just typing something into your, yes. you know, and yes, I get it, that takes money away from us as a business, but it makes sense. It's a tool that's out there that works for social that's media That's why you have a good reputation. Right? <laughs> because, it, you know, and so if you use them, then maybe there are some times, like, absolutely, it might not take you that long to design something in Canva. What we want to avoid is having the same background image as four other people who also used Canva. Right. Using it as a template and a starting space and customizing it to be for you. So I think that... I think Canva is a great example because a lot of DIY people would use that. Mm -hmm. I think there are definitely other ones, but I so agree with the question that you had of just time versus money. Does it make sense? Is it the highest and best use of your time? Well, and reputation, you, you know, like if you, again, if you hand something that looks crappy out, and like if you're gonna give a presentation and you print something at home last minute, it really shows that maybe you're not completely put together in your business, or maybe you don't value the people you're about to speak to as much because you didn't put the time and energy in to prepare for this event, to have everything ready to go. And so, it really does come down to that piece of it. I know with you, you really enjoy the learning piece. I you do. love <laughs> figuring out how does this work in email marketing? How does this work with my website? I tried this content for a little bit, but it doesn't seem to be tr attracting the way I want, so let me tweak it. You're very aware when you do those things, and so for me, yeah, do it yourself seems to work a little bit better in that case. And so I think it's being very honest with yourself as a business owner. I agree. What type of business owner you are, where your time is best spent, and how that reflects on your business. Because well, we had a, another client, oh my God, they wanted to print off a whole bunch of menus with a logo that was gonna change. Oh. Why spend the money? Why spend the money? Why not? I get it, you need the menus for like, quote unquote, opening day. Mm -hmm. But if you're just gonna go reprint them and you're just starting out, let's just wait an extra week or two or whatever it is, get it done right, and then print. I think and, that's true. I think knowing yourself as an entrepreneur, understanding your budget, and really assessing where your money goes because I mean, there's digital marketing that we're going to talk about, but you can put a lot of money in that, and that is definitely pages right stuff that I like to learn <laughs> to learn to do. But there's also print marketing that maybe I somebody like me is not as interested in, and so mm -hmm. that's something that definitely makes sense to hire out. Or maybe it's writing for somebody, or maybe it's any of these things, or even spending money to join or even attend a networking event. Right. It all falls under your marketing budget, and it's stuff that we have to consider as entrepreneurs, for sure. Absolutely, where your money's going is, I mean, I know I paid a lot of attention to it as I was starting off of, but the And other, even now, I'm sure. Oh, absolutely, yeah. still. Even there, though, it is about what do you enjoy and what are things that you want to keep doing in the future and not keep doing? You want to keep writing, so it makes sense that you handle the writing portions of things. However, if you don't like the print and you're not going to be doing it, I think the one big takeaway from this, though, is you can find someone to help at whatever level you're looking for. There are some companies that are going to say, nope, we're going to do all of it for you no matter what, or there's others that maybe it's a freelancer or whatever it is that is, I just need someone to create this one piece 
And so again, knowing yourself as a business owner and an entrepreneur of and where you're at, where always you assess where doing, you're at for sure. Because yeah, you can hire a content writer and that's it. They don't have to help you with anything else. And so that's the beauty of this whole industry are there so many talented people out there it's finding a good person that's going to be able to help with just the portions you need and not necessarily all of it yeah and i think as people are starting out that is a great to a great tip and i think that understanding where you're at in your business and what your budget is allows you to kind of go on that spectrum mm -hmm. of doing everything yourself to having everything hired out and maybe all of us travel that spectrum and we're just at different spots on it. I mean, I can definitely foresee as much as I like learning and as much as I like doing it, that as my business continues to get busier, it's harder and harder for me to do that. And so I hire out more and more from it's where I used to. Yeah, what I'm experiencing and even more so like, I'm relying much heavier on my team to complete our marketing Paige materials. Paige is lucky because she has marketing people that's already uh, working for yeah, her. Yeah, that's <laughs> one benefit that's for cheating. sure. Yeah. Let's get the website on the marketing and I can do everything else. Um, but I'm relying on them more now to say, no, you guys need to update the website. No, you guys need to. And so now I'm spending money to pay for them. And even though it's still internally and in-house, it's still money I'm having to spend, but I don't have the time anymore. Right, and that's exactly what I would have to do. Pieces. So that's where you're saying, you know, you could get to, and that took me a long time. It took me at least eight to nine years in business before I was able to say, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and just have the team handle this and not me. Yeah, and but, that's just, even though it's Paige, again, even though she's hiring her team, it really is like anybody, any of our listeners, me, anybody that I hire or our listeners mm -hmm. hire because you know when you're paying their salary you're still hiring them I'm still I'm still paying I'm still paying for the work to get done even though it's getting done in-house yes it's still and you're choosing cost. where to spend that money so well that brings up and wraps us into kind of one of the final topics here about yes. the budget and what should a budget be for these marketing efforts and how do you determine it and unfortunately for us a lot of our clients come to us and go a budget? You, I don't. I don't know what the budget is for this project, whether it be marketing or website. I'm not asking the question so I can gouge up the price. I'm asking the question so I can present a proposal that'll actually work and what their expectation is to spend. Even then, nine times out of ten, they still don't know what, what their budget is for marketing. Oh yeah, and I completely understand because when we started this and you started to talk, what I thought about, what was in my head was, it's really hard to figure that out. Yeah. And it is, and really one of the things that we have to learn as entrepreneurs is to manage our money mm -hmm. and to really take a look at it. And that's how we start to figure out what our budget is because marketing has so many different elements. It's it's yes, the digital marketing and how we're gonna deal with all of that world, which we'll talk about, but you know, are we gonna buy print? What kind of business cards are we gonna buy? You know, how are we gonna pay for the brownies? Are we yeah, trying we're to do everything by. up front or are we gonna space stuff out a little right. bit? Are we, you know, I know we like to try a little more of a phase in approach because quite frankly, we can't do everything up front right away even if we wanted to. Right. So, Let's just start and spread that initial budget out a little bit and then get into a routine of a set cost. But all of it comes down to how do we put this into a budget and what are we going to do with it? If you're going to build a website, you should have some sort of idea of what budget you want to spend on marketing, whether it's your networking efforts, whether it's your print efforts, or whether it is digital there should still be some sort of budget in mind for what that looks like. Yeah, so I think I would really encourage our listeners to first look at what would work for their business, what they really wanna do. Do they wanna network? Do they wanna look at digital marketing? Do they want to get merchandise or buy brownies? And part of that is where are you at in your business and what kind of business do you audience. have yep. in your target audience? But figuring that out and then understanding what's a priority, understanding um, what's a priority is huge, <laughs> and what does it need, and then you can start to look at the money that you have and where you can plug that in. And I think the other last piece of that would be the expectation. If you're gonna put that yes. budget in, 
what are you expecting to get back out of it? Oh, tons. Always. Always. <laughs> more than I put in, obviously. Obviously. Which could be true. Mm -hmm. It just may not be overnight. Right. It may not be that first month. Good and cautionary so, tale. Yeah. Marketing is a long-term strategy, not a short sprint. Absolutely. And so, but having that expectation or, you know, we even work with our clients sometimes to figure out what is the return on investment? How many leads are we going to need to justify spending this marketing cost? Or how, okay, if the printing is going to cost X, how much you know? do we need to get in front of people to justify that to kind of pay back? Is it one client closed? Great. Is it going to be 25 clients? You and I were talking about it the other yes. day or something, and it is like, well, let's do the math and see how long or what our expectation might be. Because if you, yeah, if you just have a budget and don't think, you know, like, oh, I'll be able to replenish it after a few months, it, it's probably not going to work that way. Yeah, and so you really need to understand these things. And, and I think sometimes this kind of circles back to what we were talking about, as I know we're getting close to time, but as we're wrapping back to what we were talking about in our last episode is sometimes maybe it makes sense for entrepreneurs to think about you also need that one-on-one -on -one sales mm -hmm. client sometimes, yep. or you're selling one product to somebody so that you have the money to do the long-term strategy, which is marketing. Absolutely. And I think it's such a balance. So maybe our next word of the day should be balance. Because <laughs> it really is. It's money and it's time and it's what works in your industry mm -hmm. and what speaks to you. Absolutely. Well, I think that we have filled lots of spaces and time with all sorts of ideas. <laughs> and I just think that there's a lot that we went over today, but I'm really excited to hear some of our listeners' thoughts and questions and everything. So feel free to leave those in the comments. What's worked for you? What's been a really fun, out of the box idea? Those ones always, you know, or that's the piece I like about the marketing aspect of it all is how do we look outside the box and yeah, make something new. really fun? and make that lasting impression instead of the exact same thing that everyone else is doing. So we'd love to hear your ideas, what's worked and what hasn't. And then uh, we'll have some more. I think we're going into social media next episode. We are. Get ready. All Buckle right. up. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. That's it for today. Thanks for joining us. We'd love to hear from you. Check us out at therapidshow.com to submit suggestions for topics or guests that you would like to hear. And of course, don't forget to subscribe on iTunes, Google Play, or wherever you get your podcasts. See you next time.